you may remember in the last episode that Kurt had helped us to complete the first part of our new terrace <laughs> to avoid the mud bath that normally ensues after the heavy rainfall that we have had. But with Kurt gone, we thankfully had our um, amazing friends from the US, uh, Neil and Kate, come to visit us with their family. And we had an amazing few days downing tools and just spending quality time to relax uh, and make the most of their company. And then Neil had very kindly offered to help me complete the second stage of the, the terrace to pour the second half of the concrete slab, which in the heat was no mean feat. So, I, so we took roughly the same approach as Kurt had showed me the first time around, getting the waterproof membrane down to help protect the concrete once it had set from being um, impacted by any ground moisture that may rise up and penetrate into it. We first set about laying a more viscous mix that was compact enough to be able to lay the steel cage directly on top. And then as we got closer and closer to the level we were aiming for, we made the mixture less and less dense until it was almost in a liquid form at the very top to make it a lot easier to smooth out and level off. It was the first time that Neil had done anything like that, so he was really keen to, to get stuck in and did an amazing job mixing the cement. We chose a mix of two parts cement, as in two buckets of cement, three of kind of small stones slash pea shingle, and then five of sand, which is pretty much the perfect mix for creating the, the slab. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing in my Another feather? Forward. Another feather? Yep, perfect. Put it. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Get some water out of it. Nice. What do you think, John? Good. Yeah, going on. Let's see it.
and then we just had to wait. Thankfully, it was only 24, well, less than 24 hours until we could walk on it, which was really good news, given that it was right outside our front door. And then another six weeks or so for it to fully cure. For us to be able to then lay travertine on it. One of the things I'd found really tricky was to make it level. <laughs> I know we'd put the kind of the wooden shuttering around the sides at the level we wanted it to be, but it was over quite a large expanse and not all the shuttering was in exactly the right place. And so it did get quite tricky in places to, to make sure it was all perfectly level. And truth be told, it didn't end up being completely level, but it was good enough for what we for what we needed in terms of them being on a travertine on top of it. Just when it was going so well, it started raining a bit. So you can see there, the pitter patter, the uh, little shapes of rain in the, in the concrete. But um, hey ho, it's going to be told over in due course. So I guess we can we can live <laughs> live with that. Um, and uh, we're nearly there. Just got the last bit to do over here, um, and then we're done. With our friends gone, we started to be able to actually make the most of the new outside space. We enjoyed watching the swallows who had made their nest inside the tower, teaching their babies how to how to fly. We enjoyed breakfast al fresco. And then with summer truly upon us, we made the most of the local market. and also hanging out with some neighbors, our local cows, and enjoying the amazingly stunning sunflower fields. Whilst it may have been raining outside, thankfully it was no longer raining inside. Um, and we had spotted an amazing deal for some travertine tiles, which we wanted to use to lay on the concrete slab. And we went to pick it up from our local DIY store. And then had the unenviable task <laughs> of, uh, of unloading it all, ready for when the concrete slab was dry enough. But we had so much of it, I think it was 70 square meters, that it required two trips, and of course, two lots of unloading all, I mean, probably equated to about close to one and a half tonnes worth of travertine. Mm -hmm. 